How's it going everyone? Today I'm here to show you how to build an effective splitter for not a lot of money with the help of two of my amazing sponsors, Race Spread Components and Professional Awesome Racing. Now the splitter that I'm going to be building today is going to be going on my Scion FRS Time Attack car, but it's important to note that the parts that I'm building it from are essentially universal and can go on any car that you build your splitter for. So before I get started with the install, I'm going to walk you guys through the parts that I'm going to be using and why I decided to use them. First off, the splitter blade itself is made by Race Spread Components, and they build their splitters out of resin impregnated birch honey. Honeycomb. Now there are a lot of benefits to building a splitter out of wood. For example, wood is very durable and very strong, but it's also not that expensive. So it's not that expensive to get your original splitter or replace it if you end up breaking it down the road. In addition, another benefit to building your car out of wood is that while wood is very strong and durable, it's also not as strong as carbon fiber. And while that does seem like a plus for carbon fiber, in an impact, if you hit something head on, the carbon fiber splitter will not bend and collapse like this splitter will. So it can instead go into the chassis of your car and you do risk damaging your chassis a lot more than you would with a wooden splitter like the one in front of me. So for those reasons, I decided to run a race bread component splitter and I'm very happy with the build of it and also the strength of it during my initial testing. Race bread components builds a lot of splitters for a lot of cars. They have some standard splitters, like for example, for the S2000 platform and for the NC Miata, but they can also make a custom splitter based on any car that you have. All you have to do is send them an outline of your front bumper and they can build a splitter to your specifications just like they did with this splitter right here. Now, in order to make my splitter more efficient, I'm gonna be using professional Awesome Racing's splitter diffusers. These diffusers mount into your splitter just like I have right here, and they make your splitter is significantly more efficient than it originally would be with just a normal flat diffuser by pulling air up underneath the car and creating additional downforce. Now, in terms of mounting solutions, I'm also going to be using Professional Awesome Racing parts to mount my splitter onto my car. I'm going to be using Professional Awesome Racing splitter rods like you see here. The splitter rod itself is made of carbon, and you can cut it to essentially any length that you need for your car, which is, like I said, earlier, one of the aspects that makes this kit universal. In terms of the mount itself, Professional Awesome Racing makes these mounts, and the best part about them, in my opinion, is the fact that while they are very strong, they're also a mount that you can disassemble without using any tools. So if you need to take your splitter off very quickly or very easily, you don't need any tools to take your splitter off. All you have to do is remove this pin right here, and then remove the main pin, and the splitter rod comes out of the mount. In addition to Professional Awesome Racing splitter rods, I'm also gonna be using their new splitter mounts. And just like the splitter rods, these are also a tool that you can disassemble without using any tools. So I have the base of the splitter mount mounted to my splitter right here. And then here's the top part, which we're gonna be mounting to the car. All you have to do to connect them or disconnect them is pop the mount in and it slides into place and locks it there. To disassemble it, you pull this switch right forward and it comes out. No tools necessary, so you can take your splitter off or put it back on super easily. In, for example, if you need to load your car onto a trailer or you need to drive your car up a driveway that has a very high driveway, you can take your splitter off and you don't risk damaging it without using any tools. Now, the last part from Professional Awesome Racing that I'm gonna be installing onto my splitter are these titanium skid blocks. These go onto the bottom of your splitter and essentially act as the point where if your splitter gets close enough to the ground where it's going to touch the ground, the first thing that's gonna to touch the ground are these skid blocks and not the splitter itself. That way you can protect the face of your splitter and the thing that gets damaged are just these titanium skid blocks which are replaceable. Another cool feature of these skid blocks is if you're familiar with time attack racing or any cars that have a lot of aero, when they're driving down a straight and they hit a lot of speed and create a lot of downforce, you'll sometimes see sparks flying out from underneath the front splitter and these will have this effect if you do get to the point where these will touch the ground and you're going at a high speed, these will spark and it looks really cool. Now, like I said in the beginning of this video, these parts are universal, which means that they're not exactly plug and play application for a lot of cars. So the setup that I'm gonna be running on my car is something that I had to do a little bit of testing and, and try a little bit of parts on um, and build a setup that works for my car. And I'll be showing you guys how I did that today. Um, the main way that I went about doing that was I went down to Lowe's and I bought some of these brackets, which are just a universal bracket. And I cut these to different sizes so that I could use these to mount the splitter and the splitter mounts onto my car. So let's go ahead and install some of these parts onto the splitter and install the splitter itself onto my car. So the first step to installing a splitter is we're first gonna place the splitter underneath the front bumper about where it's going to be mounted. Then at that point, we're gonna use some wood and also some cardboard to get it up and flush with the front bumper. At that point, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that the splitter itself is level. Then we can take out the front bumper and check again with the level to make sure that the splitter is level in both the middle and the sides of the splitter. So now that we have the splitter where we want it mounted and we have it level, we can now move forward with attaching the splitter rods and attaching the splitter mounts. 
Now, for those of you familiar with the FRS86 or BRZ, you'll recognize that I don't have the stock bumper bar here, and I instead have the JDL bumper bar. The convenient part about this bar is that it already has pre-drilled and threaded holes underneath it at certain points, and I'm going to be using those to attach my splitter. If you're still running the stock bumper bar, you can essentially just figure out where you want your splitter rods to be and then drill holes in those places. The only downside to having the JDL bar when it comes to this install is that these clevises, which we're going to be attaching to the bumper bar, have a hole that's M8 by 1.25, while the hole in this uh, bumper bar itself is M6 by 1. So in order to get that done, I bought this converter stud, but it essentially has an M6 by 1 part right here, and then an M8 by 1.25 part right here. So I'm going to start by installing these into the bumper bar. Now that I have the converter studs in, I can go ahead and install the clevises. Next, I'm going to take the part that connects to the splitter rod itself, slide it in the hole like I demonstrated earlier, put the pin in, and then put the clip in. So now that we can see where the splitters are going to be mounted on either the JDL bumper bar, the stock one, or whatever bumper bar you're currently running, we can then see where the splitter rods are going to run and figure out where we're going to drill into our splitter. So for this bar right here, this um, more center-ish one, because I have four connectors, so there's outside ones and then inside ones. For the inside one, I'm essentially going to have the splitter rod run right below where this rod is, just for the main support. And then for this outside one, I'm going to have this one actually run outside more towards the edge of the splitter. So once I figured out where those points are going to be, I went ahead and drilled holes in those places. Now in order to mount the bottom clevises onto the splitter, we're going to be using the supplied carriage bolts. Now the nice part about these carriage bolts is that they don't have any part that you're going to drill uh, from or attach to on the bottom. That way if the splitter does scrape against the ground, it won't damage the bottom of the bolt and make it impossible to remove it. Instead it has this square part right here which is going to lock itself into place in the splitter so that you can tighten and loosen it without having to touch anything on the bottom. Now in order to anchor the carriage bolt into the splitter, we're going to take one of the supplied nuts put it on top of the bolt once it's going through the splitter, and then tighten it so that this nut causes the bottom anchor of the carriage bolt to anchor itself into the splitter. At this point, you can go ahead and take the carbon rod and place it next to where the mounts are. That way you can see how long you're gonna to need to cut it to. Then you can put a piece of tape over it, mark the location you're gonna cut it, and then use some kind of rotary tool such as a Dremel tool to cut the rod. I'd highly recommend wearing eye protection and also a respirator when you're cutting the rod because the rod does give off dust when you're cutting it that you probably shouldn't breathe in. At this point, you can take the rod that you just cut, put it into the top and bottom mounts of your splitter. If necessary, you can use some kind of metal tool such as a screwdriver to twist the bottom mount to make sure that it's in the correct orientation to mount your splitter rod. All right, so now that we got the splitter rods installed, it's time to go ahead and install our splitter mount. So the first thing we're gonna do is assemble it, and all you need to do to assemble it is put these three screws that are all 10 millimeter inside this part to connect the mount uh, to the plate. And then you can go ahead and install the base in to the plate. Now, unfortunately, the back plate of the splitter mounts where you're supposed to attach it to the car is not high enough to reach the JDL bumper bar that I'm using. If you still have the stock bumper bar, then it's very possible that this will reach it and you don't have to build anything custom. But for my needs, I did have to go ahead and build something custom to attach it to the bumper bar. So the JDL bumper bar has two M8 by 1.25 holes in the back right here. And I went ahead and built this, which is a little contraption to attach to the two holes and then attach to the splitter mount right here. So I'm going to go ahead and install this. And now that my little contraption is installed, I'll go ahead and put the splitter mount and you can see that now it lines up perfectly. So I can go ahead and use some bolts to attach the splitter mount to the platform that I built. So now that the splitter mount is installed where we want it to be, I'm going to go ahead and use a sharpie to point out where I need to drill holes to attach the bottom plate. I'm only going to be drilling the outside corners because it doesn't really need all four points. However, if your splitter creates a lot of downpours, there are four points on this mount to attach it to. Now before the splitter comes off, there's also one thing that I'm going to check for and mark for, and that's where I'm going to be installing my splitter diffuser. You're going to want your splitter diffuser to feed into the wheel well, and generally on the inside part of the wheel well. That way when the air moves and travels, it has somewhere to go, as opposed to if you're feeding it somewhere that just has a flat part at the end, there would be no room for the air to travel and the airflow would essentially stop. 
So looking underneath the splitter, you can see the top of the tire right here. And this is essentially the wheel well area where we have to work with. Now if you look over here, you'll see this tow hook right here. We're not going to want the splitter diffuser to interact with this, so essentially I'm going to be installing the splitter diffuser in between here and here, where I already have these cutouts, so I'll kind of know where to be installing it. From here, I went ahead and removed my splitter rods, drilled the holes for my splitter mounts, and then mounted my splitter mounts. Next I took some measurements of the splitter diffuser, figured out where I was going to be mounting it onto my splitter, and then marked those locations so I could go ahead and cut it. At that point you can test fit the splitter diffuser and make sure it sits where you want it to sit. Then you can use some screws or some rivets to mount it into the splitter. Now for the last modification that we're going to do to the splitter, we're going to be installing these splitter blocks. Now the way I went about installing them was I put a piece of painter's tape on top of them and then marked the distance of the holes. That way I can take off the painter's tape and place it wherever I need to drill the holes on the splitter. As far as where to mount the splitter block, I essentially put it as far forwards as I can go without the screws that attach it on top extending where you will see them in front of the front bumper. Now to install this, you will need to go by screws. There are three slots and I recommend buying all three screws for it. The screw size is 1 4 by 20. It's also worth noting that another popular location to mount the splitter blocks is the edges of your splitter on the sides. That way if the sides go to hit the ground, these will hit the ground first and not your splitter. So now that I had both the splitter diffusers mounted and the skid blocks mounted, I put the splitter back on, made some final adjustments with the uh, splitter rods, and used the uh, level to make sure that everything was still sitting level, and basically the splitter is done. One also thing that I did was I attached the fender liner to the splitter rods using some zip ties, and the reason for this is because I'm not going to be attaching the fender liner to the front bumper underneath the uh, splitter obviously, so to make sure that it doesn't flail backwards and touch the wheel which can then pull it underneath the tire, I zip tied it here so that it wouldn't go back towards the tire. But just like that, I'm going to go ahead and put the front bumper on, make any trimming that needs to be done to the front bumper in case any of the splitter rods touch the front bumper, and other than that, the splitter looks great. One thing that I might end up doing is I might attach two more splitter rods to the front because my splitter, like I said before, is a 5-inch splitter, which is pretty far out and I don't want this to flex at all, so I'm going to add two more splitter rods to the front. But if you have a 3-inch splitter, which is probably the normal size for a normal like street-driven car, you should be fine with just the 4 splitter rods and the two splitter mounts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll get to them. Make sure you guys check out Race Bread Components and Professional Awesome Racing. As you can see by my splitter, they make some pretty cool products that are really cost effective, durable, track oriented, just basically everything that you could be looking for while building a track car in your garage like I am. Thank you guys so much and have a good one.